Welcome to another episode of Blooms for You. Subscribers, viewers, anybody that comments, anybody that sees this video, depending what time of year, when you see it, on the day that it airs, or maybe in a few months time. This is my Rinkatlian Te Fushu Glory Happy Holiday. And normally I prefer to have a big orchid that has a lot of blooms, lots of clusters of blooms to dedicate to everybody that watches this video as a massive thank you for clicking on the video and taking time out of your day, especially this time of year, taking time out of your busy schedule to watch my video. So because of the name of this orchid, Happy Holiday, and we are in the season, tis the season, tis the season, yes it is, I would like to make an exception and dedicate four blooms of my Happy Holiday to all of you watching this video and encourage you if you've never commented in my comments before to leave me a comment so that I can put you on a list that I have going with everybody that's commented and everybody I can identify that has subscribed so that one day you too will get a bloom dedication. Now, as I mentioned, tis the season. I know you're all very, very busy and I hope that all your holiday preparations are going according to plan. It is early days, I know. We still have a ways to go until Christmas, but as long as my happy holiday is in bloom and it matches and coincides with this time of year, I am going to dedicate these blooms to all of you and wish you happy, happy holidays. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that things are going according to plan. And I hope that maybe this is your moment to take a little break from all your preparations to enjoy a Blooms for You episode. And we'll have a closer look at the Blooms in the shade afterwards if you are interested. So let's see what I have in Bloom, had in Bloom and whose name came up this time to say thank you for your support here on my channel. The dendrobium that keeps on giving. <laughs> I don't know, every time I film her, I say, oh gosh, she's looking beautiful this time around with lots of clusters of blooms. And yes, I'm gonna repeat myself because you can't get away from the truth. She is looking beautiful right now with all these clusters of blooms. And this has been going on for months and months, just when I think that's her last cluster. She brings out another one. So I have another cluster of blooms of Dendrobium cerula to dedicate to Nafisa J. And if I may just point out which one that would be right here, we still have another bud to go. But this Dendrobium is so delicate on the blooms front that if I wait any longer, the ones I would like to also showcase will probably not look as beautiful as fresh as it does now. That is because she is very, very fussy about water hitting her blooms. Let me show you. This bloom is by no means old, but you can see how a little bit of water starts to affect her. Still pretty, but I just wanted to show you that. And that is why I am always very cautious with regards to dedicating this orchid, even though she gives me visually great, great pleasure while I water my community mount of all sorts of dendrobiums, of <laughs> phyllum, serratilabium, everything is on here. But when it comes to the sarola blooms, I wanna be very, very quick to get them filmed, to get them dedicated while they are still looking nice and clean. And I managed to do that here simply because I didn't wait for this bud to open, which I think is gorgeous. I love the buds on these as well. They remind me of little slippers from the Arabian Nights with a pointy top there. Very, very cute. She's not fragrant, never has been, but my goodness, she is a giver. Insane, insane how much this orchid just blooms and blooms and keeps on blooming over and over again. No complaints here, just pure joy. Her blooms also, when they are in the sun, which is a bit difficult at this time of year, they do come up a little bit with a chrysaline effect. Very, very pretty. And when you look at the orchid as a whole, she has a big charm factor. Just love her. I treat her exactly the same as with everybody that's on that mount. Lots of knots of light, lots of fertilizer. She's partially deciduous. Every once in a while, she'll drop a leaf. She's not as radical as a film are, but she blooms more than any of the orchids that are mounted together with her. 
and for that I'm really grateful, otherwise this mount would look nasty and scraggly. She adds a touch of class to my community mount of dendrobiums. So Nafisa J, my dendrobium Seraula, this beautiful cluster right here with its little Arabian and Knights shoe there, that blooms for you. And I thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. So very appreciated. I hope you're doing well in your part of the world. Krasnetsia Green Light, Daniel Montoya and ABS Soldier. I've got more spikes to give away. These two were already dedicated to someone else, but they're still in bloom many, many weeks later. But here we are. Look, ta-da! Surprise, surprise, more spikes coming. And here's another one. Just a single bloom, a little bit of bud blast down here, and another spike opened up. Maybe it'd be a good idea that I raise the camera, right? <laughs> Okay, so this one has only just opened this morning, but I did want to film this orchid when all her spikes were in bloom. But you can see the chartreuseness of the petals and sepals as they are fresh. And then you can see the contrasting change into white a couple of days later. Cutie, 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 green light. Very, very well fitting name. I love it. And she smells like a neo Phoenicia all day long, which is super pleasant in the dining room area where I have her located. No matter sun, no matter that it's cloudy, no matter that it's colder than usual, she smells divine. Love it. Also very pleased that she did decide to bloom for me. I had a little bit of a hiccup. I was getting complacent and I thought, well, now that she has bloomed once, I don't need to expose her to such harsh light as the east side of my patio provides. And I had her in the south facing covered portico and then care collab time came and I never saw a bloom or a spike. And well, there's that. So I promptly put her back onto the east side, just thought, well, never mind the season. It's done. Hakuna Matata, we move on. And then spikes started to appear. Yes, so happy. And the fact that she's blooming out even better because the temperatures since have changed dramatically. So Daniel Montoya, I have six blooms in total for you and ABS Soldier to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. So appreciated. Love our exchange. Can't say much more than that, really. <laughs> I hope you're doing well and that the winter is being kind to you. Thanks to both of you via my Krasnetsia green light for your support. She's back. She's beautiful. Yoo-hoo on Costelli. Wildcat. In my case, it's a golden red star. I have a spike with six blooms for Teodora, Zaneva, and three JBCEL. Three JBCEL something like that. Anyway, Teodora Zaneva and 3JB Cell. This is my Oncostello Wildcat Golden Red Star back in bloom. I haven't seen these blooms since 2019 because I messed the orchid up pretty bad in 2020. Having thought that, well, my job here is done, I've rescued her. <laughs> so after rescuing her from a sales table, she was doing well. I thought my job was done. Well, no and I promptly put her back into rescue mode in 2020 because I was not respecting how much water she needed to be happy. But we've corrected that now, and I have a little starter spike coming back, but that is great news because now she's on her way and she's strong enough to bloom. None of my pseudobulbs have desiccated. Isn't this gorgeous? This one is just opening in that chocolate rich color. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that I caught these in their prime, seeing as they're kind of blooming out of season. As far as I'm concerned, my calendar says this shouldn't be happening. Onco Stellar Wildcat Golden Red Star says it is happening. So I am jumping the gun and I'm going to film her right now while her blooms are pristine and I can dedicate them to say thank you so very, very much, Teodora Zaneva and 3JB Cell 
for your support here on my channel all this time. It is so very, very much appreciated. And little wildcat here, she blooms for the two of you, plus one down there, which again, ah, oh, look at that color. That is just, oh, I love it. And yes, as a thank you for being here, for spending time on my channel, watching my videos, for your feedback and everything that you contribute as far as support. You are so appreciated. Thank you very, very much, Teodora Zaneva and 3JB Cell. The first spike, yep, the first spike of my Tolumnia pink brisht, Gay Woodling and Valmira Nani. Thank you to the two of you ladies for supporting my channel the way that you do. So yes, I have her out in the sun and the pink looks a little bit washed out, but when you're in the shade, you won't be able to see that there have been pixies on this bloom. And you won't be able to see the sparkles. Can you see them? Oh my goodness, I hope the viewfinder is picking this up. Look at this. Little itty bitty tiny pink sparkles. Such a gorgeous little accent to these blooms. So she's called Pink Brisht for obvious reasons, but what I think I'm going to do is put her into the shade so that we can appreciate the blooms even more. There we are, that's better. At least when it comes to being able to see the real color, the true color of this little Tolumnia. Just to give you a better impression, Gay Woodling and Belmira Nani, what exactly is blooming here for you in Southern Spain to say thank you for your support? would make no sense to show off washed out colors if we can do something about it. And this is what we can do. I think this is a beautiful little Tolumnia. I was not expecting at the time of buying my Tolumnias that most of them would be mislabeled. But I'm going to consider that this one is correctly labeled because she is blooming according to the name. Pink Brisht. Turns out I had three. There's another one starting to bloom in the background there just starting to open her spikes. Has a different label, but look at it, blooming pink brisht. So my Tolumnias are pretty much an assortment of, you know, forest gump, box of chocolates. Don't know what's gonna come out until they bloom. Happy to say though, that pink is looking fabulous. And I hope that the sparkles did show through. I will only find out at a later stage. It's a vigorous little orchid. She has another spike coming right here. I've got to be careful. I don't want to bump anything. It'd be the first time that I would get three spikes out of one basket. There's another one back there. So Pink Brisht, this one, this little basket is busy. Happy days. Can we get back into focus, please? Yep, there we are. They're not lasting as long as other Tolumnia blooms that I am used to, so this is not a premature video. In this case, it's what you see is what you get and get that into focus straight away. You can see this one is just opening. These other ones back here look fresh. And this one is looking like it's aging, at least to the naked eye. Aging in a sense, if you want to call it a color changer, it just goes from a shocking pink to a little bit more of a vintage pink. But pink it is, pink brisht, I'll take it. Thank you so very, very much, Gay Woodling and Balmira Nani for your support here on my channel. It is so very much appreciated and my Tolumnia Pink Brisht blooms for you. This sun thing is going really well, so I'm gonna stick with it. I've got my Brassocatlia Binosa Wabash Valley out with her next two blooms that have just opened maybe two or three days ago to say thank you to Barbecue and Blues and Rutniot82. She is in full bloom now, I would say, if you can call it that. Here are three blooms that have been open quite a while now, but you can see, yeah, even with the sun, the lip is fading quite a bit in comparison to the freshness of these just open blooms, but we'll take her into the shade. I can see that there's certain things getting washed out here and that detail is not to be missed. 
there we are. Barbecue and Blues and Routenyot 82. A bloom each of my Binosa Wabash Valley and I hope that both of you are into this bloom. I do not want to disappoint in picking out blooms, especially when I want to say thank you for everything that you're doing in supporting my channel. So I do hope that green blooms with a striking enormous lip, look at the size of this thing, especially in profile, is something that you also enjoy and like. Maybe if the bloom doesn't speak to you, let me tell you about her fragrance. Maybe that'll convince you because it is absolutely divine. Love this fragrance. You can really tell the Brassavola nodosa in there. And yes, she is fragrant in the evenings, but that is because of Brassavola nodosa. It is delicious, citrusy, very, very intense. If I were to say sweet, that would be exaggerating. Give it a certain sweetness that is appealing and that is not pungent in your nose or nauseating, but it is super intense, very pleasant. A homegrown air freshener, let's put it this way. Now, I am quite happy with blooms like these. It's always difficult to judge whether the person you're saying thank you to is also a fan of green blooms and then with some kind of added detail, a lip like this one. So I really hope I got it right. For you, barbecue and blues, and for Rudy Not 82, I would hate to disappoint after all the support you are giving me here on my channel. Seeing your comments whenever I do in my comment section, barbecue and blues, I always get this weekend vibe and I always make sure that you know that you give me that great sensation of, well, barbecue and blues. And Rudniot, I hope that you are doing well in your part of the world, that everything is going smoothly according to plan, no issues, no headaches, plain sailing, so to speak. To the two of you, my Binosa Wabash Valley, thank you very, very much for supporting me on my channel. Even though the other blooms are starting to fade, I don't mind. They have been fantastic companions in my blooming alley. Having another spike open this time of year, super, super welcome. Stay safe, Barbecue and Blues, and stay safe, Rudniot82. Thank you for your support. She's at it again. Pro Catavola Golden Peacock. I have a spike this time with four blooms. Last time I only got three. But you know what? This pop of color, three, two, four, whatever. <laughs> Some orchids look much nicer in the shade. You can see the contrast much better. But my goodness, I couldn't resist bringing her out into the sunlight to be able to dedicate this spike with four blooms to summer rays and Alex orchids and houseplants. Look at that. Oh, that is amazing. Maybe if I go up a little bit more, get her a little bit more centered. So, summer rays, Alex orchids and house plants. You've been on my channel, it has been a while, but here we are, I finally have a golden peacock in bloom once again to dedicate this spike of four blooms to you, to say thank you so very, very much for being on my channel, for supporting it with your time, your views and your comments. Know that I see you and that I appreciate you a lot. My golden peacock is a regular bloomer. This is probably the third spike now of this season. However, I think that she will now be focusing mainly on this growth. Whether it will bloom or not remains to be seen because it has started during the colder months of the year. Oh well, a structure is a structure. A structure brings new roots and that means the orchid is getting stronger and stronger again. So whether this one will bloom, again, remains to be seen. But I am very, very grateful that during this time of year, where it gets dark quite quickly, not nasty as you can see, gorgeous sunshine, but dark. This one pops with a beautiful orange in my blooming alley indoors. Thank you very, very much, Summer Rays and Alex Orchids and Houseplants. I really appreciate you here. And I really hope that everything is going well and going smoothly with whatever it is that you are planning during this time of year. Before I move on 
to the next bloom and dedication. Just a little bit of a close-up view of that gorgeous, gorgeous lip. I love the star structure. And my goodness, that sun, that really, really tops it off. Beautiful. Thank you, Summer Rays, and thank you, Alex Orchids and Houseplants. Nothing like gorgeous blooms against a blue sky with beautiful Southern Spanish winter sunshine shining on them. It didn't look too washed out if my viewfinder wasn't playing tricks on me. You could still see the beautiful yellow flaring of this gorgeous, gorgeous hybrid. But in the shade, it's even more predominant now. And uh, yeah, let's go in and have a little bit of a closer look. The beauty of this orchid this time around is I have two more buds coming if I am not mistaken and if all goes well. So I will, spoiler alert, I will dedicate her again next time, even though we don't have four blooms to show for, but I am really taking advantage of the fact that she is called Happy Holiday, and that is my wish to all of you. Look at that. Incredible, absolutely incredible. So proud of her. We have been through a lot, this orchid and I, figuring each other out, didn't know what she didn't like. And after three and a half years, nailed it. <laughs> At least with this display. So. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. Thank you for taking some time out of your day. I'm wishing all of you happy, happy holidays using my Ring Catalian, the Fushu Glory Happy Holiday to dedicate to you. And thank you so very much for your support here on my channel. Continue to please stay safe and enjoy all that this season has to offer. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.